In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, how does a DOL starter actually control a motor? Just before we explain the answer to this question, please be aware that this video is one of a series that we've made on the subject of motor controls in association with Crompton controls. They can be viewed individually, or you can click the link in the description below to view them as part of a free online training package to help you with your CPD, and you'll receive a certificate to prove that you've completed the course. In the previous video in this series, we looked at the component parts inside a DOL starter and saw how the use of one, including an overload relay, could help you to comply with the regulations in Group 522 in BS 7671. We also saw that the switching was controlled by an electromagnetic coil in the contactor, and it's that element that we're really going to focus in on in this video, because that helps us to comply with another requirement in the regulations. There's two regulations that are very similar to each other. One is in 552.1.3 in the section on rotating machines. It reads, except where failure to start after a brief interruption would be likely to cause greater danger, every motor shall be provided with means to prevent automatic restarting after a stoppage due to a drop in voltage or failure of supply, where unexpected restarting of the motor might cause danger. This requirement does not preclude arrangements for starting a motor at intervals by an automatic control device where other adequate precautions are taken against danger from unexpected restarting. The other is very similar and is found in 463.3.1 which relates to motor controls and is so similar that we won't reread it here. So why is compliance with these regulations so important? Well, you can imagine the situation. If a motor operating some piece of machinery was to be running away and then the power to it dropped out for some reason, maybe a tripped breaker or a power cut or similar. If someone operating the machinery decided to have a little break while waiting for it to be fixed and leant up against the motor or whatever it was driving, and then suddenly the power came back on. If the motor or machine was wired in such a way that it instantly restarted, then the person in contact with it would be about to have a very bad day. So the regulation requires us to provide some method of preventing the motor from restarting after the power has been cut to it, or there's been a drop in the supply voltage for some reason. So how does the coil in the back of the contactor help us to comply with this regulation? Well, to answer that, we'll have to look at how the coil is connected up for normal operation. In order to energize the coil, direct online starters incorporate buttons for turning the motor on and off. These buttons operate switches and these switches are momentary in nature. That means that they only make a connection when you're actually pressing them. So generally speaking, when you operate a light switch, it will stay in the position you change it to in either the on or off position. The switches in the buttons on the starter will return to their natural position when you take your finger off them. This means the switches can be broken down into two different types, one that makes a connection when you press it and one that breaks a connection when you press it. We refer to these as normally open or NO and normally closed or NC. You may have seen those letters on the contactor and overload in the previous video. In the context of these switches and terminals on contactors, normal means the state they're in when no external force is acting on them. So for a manually operated button like this, normal is when they're not being pressed. For a contact on an overload relay, it means when it hasn't tripped due to a fault. For a contactor, normal is when the contactor is not energized. So for our control buttons, the start button will usually be a normally open contact. Let's try wiring this contactor up in different ways and see how it behaves. For simplicity, we're using a 230 volt coil and feeding a single phase motor. Now, if we wire it up like this, passing the control wire through the start button contact, we'll ignore the stop for now, and take the wire to the A2 terminal on the contact and connect the neutral to terminal A1. Now, if I press the start button, you can see that the coil is energized and the motor starts up. But if I take my finger off the start button, you can see that the connection to the coil is broken. Therefore, the contactor returns to its resting position and disconnects the supply to the motor, which in turn will obviously stop. Now, generally speaking, it's massively inconvenient to have to keep your finger on a button to keep a motor running, especially in automated processes. You want to be able to turn them on and leave them running merrily away. So how do we achieve that? Well, if we look at the contactor, you may have noticed that it has this odd extra pair of terminals here for an extra contact. Now, this is not designed to make and break the same level of current that the main contacts are, 
but it can break smaller currents. It will make and break at the same time as the main contacts, and as you can see in this case, this additional contact is normally open, meaning that it's not making an electrical connection until the contactor is energized. You can identify it as the identifying numbers and letters marked on the terminals change. The main contacts are labeled one to six and have L1, L2, and L3 on the incoming side, and T1, T2, and T3 on the outgoing side. The additional contact is labeled differently with a 13 and a 14, as well as the identifying mark of NO for normally open. This is what's referred to as an auxiliary contact. And most contactors will allow you to add extra ones, which can be used for monitoring and signaling and all sorts of other clever things. But we're going to use this auxiliary contact for a different purpose. If we wire through our start button as before, but we'll also wire the control circuit through the auxiliary contact. So the auxiliary contact and the start button are wired in parallel with each other. Now watch what happens when I press the start button. The motor starts as it did before, but when I take my finger off the start button, the motor continues to run. That's because the coil is holding the auxiliary contact in, which if you follow the circuit round, means that the coil is now connected to the supply, even when the start button isn't pressed. Clever stuff, right? Although now I've got the problem that the motor won't stop. To get over this problem, we need to come back to the stop button that we ignored earlier. Some starters will have a separate button wired into the circuit, but the majority, like this one from Crompton Controls, uses the normally closed contact on the thermal overload relay to act as the stop control. Either way, the contact behind this button is normally closed, meaning it's always making an electrical connection until it's pressed, at which point the contact breaks the circuit. So we wire the stop button up in series with the start button and the auxiliary contact, so it looks something like this. Now when we press the start button, the auxiliary contact pulls in and keeps the coil energized even when I take my finger off the start button, so it stays running as it did before. But now, pressing the stop button will break the control circuit, disconnect the coil in the back of the contactor, and the motor will stop operating. Because the auxiliary contact is disconnected, the motor won't start again until the start button is pressed. Now, you may sometimes come across stop buttons with two normally closed contacts behind them that are wired in series with each other. This is an added safety feature because sometimes the contacts in here can become jammed or slightly welded together, meaning they won't open when pressed. Having two contacts wired in series means that you've got a backup in case one of the contacts doesn't operate quickly. At the start of the video, we discussed regulation 552.1.3 that basically stated that if the power is cut to a motor, then it shouldn't be able to restart suddenly when the supply is restored. Looking at the way we've got this direct online starter wired up, we've seen that pressing the stop button stops the motor from running and it won't restart until the start button is pressed. But exactly the same thing will happen if we disconnect the external supply to the starter. The coil will drop out, disconnecting the auxiliary contact, and if the external supply is then reconnected, it won't restart until we press the start button, which means that we've complied with the regulation. So there we go. We've discussed how a DOL starter actually controls a motor and how it can help us to comply with the wiring regulations. But we can take this control even further by adding another start stop button remotely and even something called inch control. To find out how we do that, check out this video right here or click the link in the description below to watch it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD and you'll receive a certificate as well. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.